so cool, man. I know. It's so neat. I'll let you go. Okay, so no more, uh, Dave, this is uh, the Bat Vault. This is Fort Knox for us, you know. We're not far from Fort Knox here in Kentucky where yeah. all the gold is. Um, this oh is God. our Fort Knox. Baseball uh, gold. This is baseball gold. This is uh, the Louisville Slugger Bat Vault. Uh, wow. Where all the turning models were are kept uh, for the bats that we've made over the decades. And so these are all the original templates that our craftsmen used to hand turn the bat. So when they're making your P72 or C271, craftsmen will come in here, they, they pull these templates out. You never want to make a copy from a copy, because the more you do that, it's going to get watered down. It's not going to be the exact same. So these are all the original templates. So I've got some gloves for you over here. I know you're used to putting on Any some Any Nomars? <laughs> Mine are archaic, too. Wait, wait, too. wait, wait. When you put them on, oh. can you do the routine? steps into the batter's box. Tightens his glove up, wristbands, there's the feet, do a little two-step. <laughs> What's so funny, Dave? You can knock the routine, but it worked. <laughs> well, see, this is, first of all, let me explain something to you. With, the misconception is about my routine. The misconception is that everybody thought I was taking and I was strapping them on and off. I never did that. Once I put it on, it was strapped on, they were on. What I was doing was I was pulling them down. So here. So what ends up happening is, is that, I, you know, I tap my toes. I want my feet at the end of my shoes before I exert energy so they felt really nice and tight. I wanted my shoes to feel that way before I was in it. So that's what I'm tapping my toes. Okay. So I'm just in that. And I'm not, there's no set number. I'm just thinking, I'm waiting for the pitcher. That was my timing for the pitcher. So I'm just waiting on him. Once I start tapping, I'm ready to hit. So I'm just waiting. Well, since I have something on my hands, I wanted my hands to feel the way my toes were at the end of my shoes, so I have to be the end. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling them down so my fingers get there, and I'm pulling this one down, because I have the bat, so it's here and here. So I pull yeah. that down, you can see them getting tight. That's the whole thing. I don't know how many times I'm doing it. I'm not thinking, because I'm thinking about something now. It was just the feel, all right? I got them, they're nice and tight, let's go. Inside the vault, Nomar Garcia Parra also gets the feel of some bats, one belonging to another former Red Sox legend. This is the W215. This is the model that Ted Williams created. Whoa. How about that, Nomar? You can see how particular Ted was about his bats. We have reference marks every inch along that bat. So that's for the craftsmen as they're entering their bat. They're going to check with calipers against their model bat, making sure they make an exact copy of that. What do you think holding that, Nomar? That's pretty cool. He That's put, really he put cool. a couple of dents in that wall, too. Man. <laughs> wow. That is really neat. Look at that. They used to call Ted Williams the kid, and that's just what he was when the study of him was made in 1939. Ted Williams is widely regarded as one of the best hitters in baseball history. And there it goes, a tremendous home in the right center. The 19-time All-Star and two-time MVP hit for baseball's Triple Crown twice and led the league in batting six times, including in 1941 when he posted a 406 average, the last time a player has broken the 400 mark. And the Hall of Famer's interest in the art of hitting remained strong long after his retirement. Ted Williams' relationship started my rookie year. I remember my general manager telling me that tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Ted Williams is going to call you. 11 a.m. comes around and next thing I know I can hear my friends screaming, oh my God, it's him, it's him. They run into my room and I'm having to push them off, leave me alone. Sure enough, Ted Williams is on the other line and he's just asking me questions left and right, just wanting to know how much I knew, what I was thinking when I'm, when I'm hitting. And and I, nobody's ever asked me the questions like this before. I might have talked for about a half hour, 45 minutes, hung up the phone. Then I get a call back from our general manager, and he goes, I guess it went pretty well. And, and I said, why, why would you say that? He says, well, Ted Williams said, you're the first person to answer every one of his questions right. And then our, our relationship just kind of took off from there. Swing and a drive down the right field line. This one is going to be out of here. Beyond the pesky pole. 
he would call me in the middle of the season in the clubhouse, checking in on me, saying he watched the game the night before. I would visit him in his home in Florida before the season started every year. And it wasn't always just about baseball. Both being from Southern California was pretty special. Both being Mexican was real special as well. And we would chat about uh, just life in general. The pair's friendship was on display during the 1999 All-Star Game at Fenway Park, with Garcia Parra appearing in his second Midsummer Classic and 80-year-old Ted Williams having been selected to MLB's All-Century team. He over the left field at this very ballpark. He was the last man to hit 400 in a season, and he did it 58 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the greatest hitter that ever lived, number nine, Hall of Famer, baseball legend, It was pretty surreal to see how all the players felt about him. I mean, for me personally, I'd already had such a close relationship with him. And then knowing that he was asking for me, looking for me just in that moment. And, uh, and that was really, really special. <laughs> There's my man right here. You're going to be everybody's man, boy. The following season, Garcia Parra gave Williams' magical mark a good run. Deep right field, he went the other way, very deep. Katsi getting ready, but it's over his head and gone. And the Red Sox have just tied it up as Nomar touches them all. 2000, you know, there's talks where you're flirting with 400 and then being friends with Ted Williams. People are going, wait, is he going to be the next 400 hitter? And, you know, I once again, it wasn't about that. Um, what was great was just getting calls from him and just, just talking baseball, obviously. Nomar at 399. The last guy to hit 400 back in 1941. Teddy ball game. Ted Williams. Ground ball that's fair. Coffee with a sweet backhanded pick, but his throw is not in time. And then a couple years later, Ted Williams ended up passing away. And, and for me, it was really tough. Still tough to this day because I miss him. I miss just being able to pick up the phone and talk to him, even after after playing all these years, you know, what's retirement like? You know, what, what, did, what was it like for him experiencing it? What's it been like for me so far? Uh, and just talking baseball in the game. Uh, yeah, uh, I miss you. That's cool. That one's cool. That one's neat. I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess with that one. 